Hey everyone, welcome to Fearfully and Wonderfully Me, a podcast designed to help you increase your influence, develop your leadership, and maximize your results. Today's episode is uh, the fourth episode in a series that I've been doing on the book Change Happens that I co wrote with Mac. And, you know, last uh, podcast episode, I talked about the two different ways that we could look at change, either proactively or reactively. So I'd like to dig in um, in this episode just a little bit more on why people resist change, right? Why do we resist change um, naturally? Why do we have the tendency to be reactive when change happens? So I'd like to kind of dig that down a little bit more because I know sometimes when we break things down and we understand why we do things the way we do, it's easier for us to shift our perspective. So I really like to think about this. Um, I, I, I want to share a quote with you by Nathaniel Braden, uh, Brandon. And he, talk, he says, uh, the first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance. So I'd like to just kind of dig that down a little bit more. You know, some people are very naturally receptive to change. They just love change. Um, Mac is one of those people. He just naturally loves change all the time um, because he just, that's the way he is. He's just wired. And then there are some people, and I'm a little bit more like this, that I kind of tend to like a little more stability and structure and, and planning. And so, you know, I'm just a little more naturally, um, not as accepting of change when it happens. Now I've learned to to accept change and I've worked very hard to remember to change my perspective and look for the opportunities in change. But my point here is that most of us are either naturally love change, can't wait for things to change or naturally, eh, I would, I would like a little more stability or um, structure. And so, you know, I think it's important to realize which which one are we? Because, you know, it's just a little bit of self-awareness and, and emotional intelligence, but but recognizing our natural tendency allows us to, to guard against um, opportunities where we might miss the boat because we're, we're naturally one way or the other. For example, somebody that loves change might change too quickly and jump into something and, and without considering all the, the options or the pros and cons. Or somebody who's naturally more resistant to change might wait too late to change and miss the boat. So just, you know, again, a little bit of self-awareness to to think about which way you naturally have a tendency to go. So, you know, nearly everyone experiences some level of resistance to change in some dimension of life. Maybe it's um, not moving to a new city that, that gets you uncomfortable, but maybe it's changing careers or, you know, changing what brand of shoe you like. Um, so we're all a little bit different in that. But there are three reasons that most of us resist change. And, you know, sometimes resistance to change is based on a valid reason. For example, I, I don't like to change the running shoe that that I have the brand of running shoe it's my favorite running shoe brand that I've ever found and and I pretty much just order the new shoe every time you know every time they change the model I just order the same shoe in that model and that brand and I don't like to change that because I've had some bad experiences with other brands of shoes and so I I kind of just naturally resist I don't even consider that like that decision is made and I have default to every time I need shoes. This is the brand and the type that I get. But here's the thing. I recognize that even though it's a valid resistance toward change because I've had some, you know, you get the wrong pair of running shoes and you, you're stuck with it for a while. You get some blisters or some sore feet. Um, so I recognize that that's a valid reason not to change. But here's the thing. I'm also possibly missing out on an even better running shoe because I don't really change. I don't, I don't shop around. I don't try new brands or anything like that. So I, it, you know, most of us have one of, or th- one or more of three reasons that we resist change. Number one, it's not comfortable. You know, anytime we're changing, we're getting outside our, our comfort zone and we're leaving behind a familiar um, setting. And 
you know, that's it's just not comfortable. I remember when Mac and I um, moved several years ago, and you know, there was a whole love change of, involved with that, changing uh, cities and changing states and changing houses and homes, and you know, it it wasn't comfortable. Just things like moving to a new um, uh, house and and or uh, moving to an apartment from a house and everything you know I had to remember where did I put this where do I put this um, I almost had to create a new system for where I stored everything just because everything was different in a new place where we were living and I lost things constantly because I you know in the old house I had a system for well this is where that flashlight goes or this is where this is always stored luggage tags for example just one of those little things that when we moved to the new place the new apartment everything was stored differently and i would spend sometimes just 30 minutes looking for luggage tags because i couldn't remember what i had done with them only to find later they were zipped inside the suitcase to begin with so you know that's the number one reason that we resist change it's it's not comfortable um eventually you'll get used to the new state but but it's not comfortable to go through that. Number two, it's not easy. You know, anytime we are changing something, we have to put more energy into it. And think of the, the last time that you changed jobs, for example. You had to put a lot more energy into your new job. Um, you had to remember things like, oh goodness, I remember when I started working at the hospital, obviously years and years and years ago, and that was a huge change for me it was a great opportunity i was so excited to get the position but it was definitely not easy to start out because number one it was huge you know i'd gone from working in a smaller physician office to this you know seven eight story uh eight floor hospital and my office was on the third floor and i had to navigate how to get there um, of all things and so you know that's not easy. I had to, to remember where to turn and then goodness, if you wanted to go down and, and get lunch from the cafeteria, I had to remember how to get back because I could get lost. And, and you know, it's not easy when we go through change. It takes more energy. We have to learn um, new job skills. You know, when you change jobs last, you had to learn a new computer system, maybe a new email system. And you have to spend more time and energy thinking about things and so it, it it we almost naturally default to resistant that because we don't like to spend more time and energy on things like that and then number three it requires risk change requires risk and most of us kind of have a natural aversion to risk now I'm not talking I am I'm really talking about the average person here I'm not talking about um, the, the guy that does the high wire walking um, Walenda and you know he just seems to, to naturally enjoy and appreciate um, opportunities that come with a lot of risk obviously but most of us would not enjoy walking a, across a high wire across uh, Times Square I think I saw him do that a few years ago right most of us just have a natural aversion toward risk and that's that's smart you know we've learned as we've gotten older that with risk comes an opportunity for loss or from uh, pain or for things to not turn out so good and so we just have learned that risk is not a good thing um, some of us are more tolerant of risk than others some of us are just very risk averse and so we almost never want to go through changes because we don't want to risk anything and then some people are more accepting of risk and, and more open to, um, to opportunities like that knowing that there's potential they may lose out so but you know we don't naturally like to take risks if the odds aren't in our favor or we think that the odds aren't in our favor because we stand to lose a lot and, and change brings about that risk because we might not like the new situation um, as much as the old one. And so it's important to, to think about that and recognize when that's happening. Are we catching ourselves resisting change because we might not like the new one um, I'm, a couple of podcast episodes ago I mentioned that the gym that I work at um, just got bought and so there's a new owner 
And, you know, right away there were some changes um, with the way the new owner was running things and changing things. I noticed uh, things like new paper towel holders and, you know, things like that. And, um, you know, I look at this as an opportunity for for there to be some improvement, certainly. But I can remember when I was the one who was resisting change in a similar situation. Um, years ago, I was I had just started teaching group fitness. And the instructor that hired me and mentored me and, and, and kind of brought me on board, um, just a few months after I started teaching, she announced that she was moving um, to a new gym and a new facility. She actually bought her own gym and moved. And so suddenly we had a new group fitness manager. And oh, I, I was very resistant toward the change. All I could see at that time were the negatives because you know, anytime the new manager comes in, they make some changes, changes to schedules and things like that. And I was very, uh, very adverse to that. Um, I didn't want things to change, you know, and I guess I just had never realized that the world didn't revolve around my group fitness career. And it was a, a humbling moment because, you know, I kind of just, I didn't like the new manager and I let everyone know that I was resistant to change and, you know, I wasn't that early adopter, certainly, but I wasn't on board with supporting the change. And, you know, what happened to my influence is it drastically decreased. I was the, the last person to know about any other changes because everyone knew I didn't like change. And so everyone would talk about, you know, things and, and upcoming changes, but I was the last one to know about them because goodness, who wanted to tell me about changes? Cause they knew I didn't like them. I'd probably complain about it or I certainly wouldn't be receptive to it. And I certainly wasn't coming up with any great ideas for improvements either because that's the thing is I was just resisting change for the sake of resisting change and resisting that new manager and my influence with her uh, went down and it took me several months to realize that I was the problem you know I had to change my attitude toward the change and be more receptive to it and, and learn to look for the, the possibilities and you know there with any change there is always some potential for for good and of course there's potential for um things to not be as good right but we have to recognize um when we are resisting change just because we don't want to go through it because we don't want to put the time or effort or energy or you know we have to recognize that we might be missing out um, on things you know in my case I missed out on a huge opportunity to build influence with the new manager and so think about that um, if something happens like that in your job it's an opportunity to, to gain influence if you're on board and supportive when change happens you come across as a leader. You come across with more influence. And uh, we can talk about that a little bit more. That'd be a, a good topic to, to think about for a future podcast episode. But there you go. Three reasons why most of us um, resist change. Until next time. Hey everyone, if you've enjoyed this podcast episode that is based on the book, Change Happens, Leading Yourself and Others Through Change that I co-wrote with my husband, Max Story, you can uh, find details more about the book, more about our speaking programs on this topic. Jump on my website, riastory.com forward slash change. So that's R-I-A-S-T-O-R-Y dot com forward slash change. And you can find a link um, from that. You can order the book right there from either the website or from Amazon. If you've got Amazon and you like Prime, free shipping, um, you can order it directly from Amazon. But you can also get it from my website if you'd rather have a signed copy. Um, and if you're an audiobook listener, you can listen to an audio sample of Change Happens right there from that website page. So again, riastory.com forward slash change.